guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Lydia. Today I'm going to be doing kind of a sort of sit down video because it's been a while since I filmed my face, which kind of feels weird, kind of feels good, you know, kind of putting it out there. Hi, I'm Lydia. <laughs> I like to bake a lot. So I'm going to be showing you how I keep my sourdough starter alive. I actually have two different sourdough starters. They're both the same. I just keep two of them just because short answer is um, I like to bake a lot and then the long answer is well there's many different reasons why I keep two but I do have two starters so I'm just going to be going through the process of what I do to keep mine alive keep in mind that there are so many methods of feeding your starter and different ways to do it so just um, do your own research I'm gonna be showing you how I do it I've had mine for years now and I keep it alive basically in my refrigerator most of the time when I'm not baking and when I'm baking, it's out on my countertop. It's actually right here. Here's one of them. I have my laughing one, my laughing face one, and this one. So I have two of them. I'm not going to show you the steps uh, to make a sourdough starter. You can order yours offline or you can just make one at home. It's summer right now. So, well, at least where I'm at or in America. <laughs> so for, um, those of you who want to try to make your own, definitely try to make a sourdough starter during the summer. It's a fun experience and I have fun. I've done it many times before. So this one has been going strong for a few years. Like I said, I keep mine alive in the refrigerator. So basically when I'm not um, using it, when I'm not baking with it, I just feed it and I pop it in my refrigerator. And when I want to bake with it, I pull it out and I let it come to room temperature. Sometimes I wait like a full eight hours. Sometimes I wait four hours. So I want to encourage those of you who want to start a sourdough starter and like want to keep it up. I want you to just do it. That's like the best thing. There is pretty much no right and wrong way to do it. As long as it doesn't grow mold, you're pretty much fine. I've kept my sourdough starter in my refrigerator for months because we've been gone, we've been traveling. So I've even had it in my fridge for probably like four or five months at a time. And every time I came back home, I just took it out of the refrigerator, let it come to room temperature and I fed it and it was perfectly fine. So I don't want to overcomplicate anything. I'm not gonna go into like the percentages and the hydration levels and stuff like that. I'm not about that. I like things simple and if they're working, I'm not going to try to like fix anything or try to figure out like what are the ways and hydration levels and everything. I'm just not about that. I'm not a math number person. That's not me. So I just try like to keep mine simple. So I hope to encourage you guys. Um, definitely if you want more information and look into it, I am going to give you what I know and I'm just going to show you the process that, you know, feeding it and kind of what I do. And I hope it isn't over complicated or anything like that because I feel like Sometimes sourdough starters intimidate people and they just they just give up and um, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get people on board with sourdough starting. Uh, I'm not going to go into the things. Obviously, I will say that um, baking with a sourdough starter is a lot different than using commercial yeast and it is supposedly more beneficial for your gut and I can say that for myself and my gut, my stomach, it definitely... I definitely see the difference between baking with a sourdough starter as opposed to a yeast. So I will always choose a sourdough starter instead of the yeast, the commercial yeast, because that stuff just, it just messes up my stomach and I don't feel good after I eat food that has been, um, that like baked goods that have yeast in it, commercial yeast. So yeah, I like to use my sourdough starter. Without further ado, I think I've talked enough. I hope I explained it enough. I'm not going to go into depth of, you know, everything, like I said, but I'm just going to show you how I feed it and I hope I'm not going to overcomplicate it. So let's go. All right. So I have my two sourdough starters. This is what they look like. They have plastic wrap on top of them and I'm just going to remove it. I like using fresh plastic wrap. So this is what my sourdough starter looks like. Now this has been out of the fridge for a few days and it's been fed. I usually feed mine, I would say twice a day, usually in the morning and in the afternoon. You can feed them more or less and um, yeah, you just feed them when they're on the rise or when they completely blow up. It's entirely up to you. So I'm just going to stir it up really quickly. It makes noises. They should look alive. There shouldn't be any like mold or 
anything weird growing on them. They should look pretty much like this and they should smell pretty, pretty good. A little like slightly tangy, vinegary, but pretty well. So the next two ingredients that you need on top of the starters is you need some all purpose flour. I'm using King Arthur. I use Bob's Red Mill. I try to use good quality uh, flour and this is just water from my refrigerator. Also make sure you use good quality water on top of that. And then the most important thing you'll be needing is a scale. So I do use a scale when I'm baking with sourdough starter. You just get constant or consistent results that are extremely good. So anyways, can you guys tell I'm like a little OCD here? <laughs> so basically what I do is I will start with, I guess I'll start with my happy cup. This one says be happy. I love these mugs. I'm going to turn on my scale. And I'm going to place my cup on there and it should be at zero grams and we're going to add 50 grams of my starter to this beauty okay so it's at 49 it doesn't have to be exact it could be like off by a few grams I just try to get it as close as I can so there you go well just kidding I added three extra grams you know what? We're just going to go with it. It does not have to be perfect. And I'm trying to show you guys that it's okay if it's not perfect. Now we're going to add 100 grams of water. And like I said, it does not have to be perfect. Can you guys see that? Oh, and I had too much. All right, so it's in, in the right range. Now I'm going to add 100 grams of flour. And I'll just speak Romanian here. Too many things going on in my head. <laughs> so just add your flour to that. And there you go. So 250. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to stir it up until it's all combined. Look at that. It just it just does its own thing. <laughs> but I promise you guys, it does not have to be like perfect or anything like that. You just kind of want it you know, in the right range and the right consistency. I noticed some people like their starter to be like thicker. Some people like it more runny. It really does not matter. So basically right now we just fed our starter. Uh, none of my starters have names. I know people name these things, but um, I just, I don't have time for that. And I just really don't care for that. <laughs> so yeah, it's just my starter. That's kind of what we're going by. So once that is done, it should look something like this, you know, just mix it up and kind of clean up the sides. Since I'm pretty much, I think, done baking for this week, <laughs> I've been I've been baking a lot and it's pretty hot out here, so I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm baked out, you know what I mean? So I'm going to just put it in my refrigerator and so this is my starter, right? It's fed, it's, it's ready to go in the sense that it needs to eat up all that flour and um, I'm not gonna be baking with this. If you were to bake with anything, you would bake with a discard. This is the discard and you can just bake with that. So I'm just going to cover this up with some plastic wrap and honestly, I'm gonna pop it in my refrigerator. Now, if it was winter, I would probably leave it out for um, like about an hour or so and then I'd pop it in my refrigerator since it's hot and this is like pretty active. I'm just gonna pop it in my refrigerator right away. I'm gonna cover it up with plastic, but first I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to work on my second one. So pretty much the same thing. You set it at zero, you give it a stir, and you just put 50 grams of this starter into this jar. Like I said, I bake a lot, so um, since I bake a lot, I like to have two going, and sometimes, you know, I use my, uh, what is it called? My discard to bake, and sometimes I even like multiply it um, if I'm, making a lot more stuff. It just depends. So with this discard, you can make anything. You can make crackers, you can make cakes. Well, not cakes, probably like breads. Well, obviously breads, that's what it's pretty famous for. And um, like other stuff. Like I made my kozonak with that and this is the way to go because yeast, yeast just messes up my stomach. So that's not the way to go. Like I said, I'm not going to be super like, um, what is it called uh super strict about my measurements i just want to show you guys that this it doesn't have to be perfect that's that's what i'm trying to show you guys because i feel like when people get into sourdough they just get overwhelmed by everything and if people have all these crazy rules rules 
and it's just it's just annoying to be honest with you so you don't have to be perfect just do it and get used to it and as long as it doesn't smell funny and it's not growing funny stuff you're good to go and you'll know when your sourdough starter is good when it, it's like bubbly but also when you put it in water and it floats that's what you're looking for so i've had my sourdough i've been doing sourdough stuff probably for like six seven years it's been quite a long time but i don't consider myself by any means like a professional because i just do what i know and that's pretty much it i stick to what i know and now since having a baby i haven't been able to do as much baking as i want to oops sorry kind of moved the camera but Anyways, you guys get the picture. You just stir it up really well. And just like that, this is good to go. And like I said, I'm just going to cover it up with some plastic wrap. I know some people like um, use like an airtight thing. I, I don't. I don't know. I just do kind of what I do and it works. I just want you guys to know, like I said, probably for the millionth time, like you just do it and make it simple because sourdough star starters, they're, they're not that difficult. So here... Are my two starters i'm gonna pop them in the refrigerator and they're gonna be good i'm probably gonna keep it in the refrigerator for a week maybe two weeks maybe three weeks whenever i feel like baking again i will pull it out and use it um i'll probably do a better job at cleaning the jar up but yeah it's pretty easy now if someone can tell me why in the world are sourdough starters so sticky like when you go to wash your sink after you wash like these dishes Oh my goodness, like this stuff is so sticky. I always have this problem. Does anyone else have this problem? Let me know in the comment section because I'm actually pretty curious about this. This is a little sneaky do. Since I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator, I actually added a little bit of flour to it. I don't know if this is gonna make the cut in the video. I feel like I'm cheating, but I'm not. Um, so since I'm putting it in the refrigerator and it's going to be there for a while, I like to stiffen up my starter. So this is pretty stiff and I like it like this when I put it in the refrigerator because um like it's in there for a while and since it's hot like I don't I don't want it to be too watery. Now if I was baking with it I would have probably kept the you know 50 grams of starter, 100 of water, and 100 of flour but since I'm placing it in my refrigerator and it's going to be there probably for like a week or two I like it a little bit thicker so that's just what I'm going to do and it's going to be totally fine like I said I've done this for so many years and there are years where I am literally not home or like after I had my baby where my sourdough starter just, you know, gets placed on the back burner and it's okay. You just make it a little bit stiffer and you place it in the refrigerator and it's totally fine. So if you guys hear my baby, that's, that's him in the background. He's talking to his daddy and that's how we do it. You guys, it's a pretty stiff starter. Pretty excited. It looks beautiful and it's already bubbling up. Do you guys see those bubbles? That's what happens in the summer because it's so hot. So in the summer, you can get away with feeding it probably like three times. In the winter, I feed it twice in the morning and in the afternoon, but it's a little bit more difficult to get it to be so alive in the winter. I mean, it's alive, especially if your house is warm, but yeah, in the winter, it's not as active. In the summer, it's definitely more active. So like summer, you can, you can get away with feeding it more, but you know, some people feed it once a day. I've done that once. Or twice like I fed it once a day in the winter and it was fine but I try to go like twice a day but yeah it's pretty much it it's pretty basic all right guys I hope I encouraged you to perhaps start your own sourdough starter or you know kind of dip your toes into it it's pretty fascinating I'm going to leave the link of the sourdough starter recipe that I use to actually make my own sourdough starter and I will link this one as well so you guys have all that information. Like I said, I'm not going to go into detail of everything because I'm not trying to complicate anything. And I, that was my baby. <laughs> and I'm not trying to make anyone, you know, kind of not want to bake with sourdough starter because I think sourdough starter is fun. And if I could do it, I definitely think you can do it because listen, being a mom, home, baking with a little one. It's a lot of work, so if I could do it, you could definitely could do it. All right, guys, I'm going to head on out of here. Make sure you guys comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.